So another one of the principles of Pilates is the center. So a lot of people um, recommend Pilates for abdominal exercises and strength, like go and work your core in Pilates. And I suppose it had that image for a while, um, a lot of hook, pulling in, sucking in, um, which creates a lot of issues if you do that. So I tend not to teach, I tend not to, I don't teach any sucking in or pulling in of the belly. I just don't teach that um, because I've noticed that when it does that, and I've seen in other, uh, huh, I don't know, so when I, I've noticed that with other people, when they do that, it tends to change the position of your spine, tends to change the position of your pelvis, it tends to tighten the diaphragm, which switches off the abdominal muscles, okay? So it's kind of counterintuitive if you're doing that. So it's much better to learn how to breathe better from your diaphragm than to feel that you've got to pull in to, um, to strengthen your abdominals. So I don't teach a pulling in. Um, I might teach an awareness in the beginning of where everything is um, and if you could contract your abdominals but without moving the pelvis but it's not, it, they, they contract on their own um, milliseconds before you actually, like just then I lifted my arms. So they would have contracted to stabilize before I lifted my arms or before I go and reach out for a cup of tea or a hold onto the kettle or anything like that. Um, so noticing your center, but for me, center is allowing some strength from your center, but with strength, comes stability, stability of your spine, the stability of the pelvis, which allows mobility of your joints, of your shoulders, of your hips, of your knees, of your ankles. Um, and if there's a lack of stability around here, around the spine and, and the pelvis, then you'll find that other, your joints tend to lock up or tend to compress. You get compression around your hips, get compression around your shoulders, your jaw might tighten up, your neck might tighten up. Uh, your toes might tighten up um, if there's lack of stability from your center. So things like any scars you've had, any um, injuries, even going back to when you were a kid, if you had appendix out, you know, anything like that that's happened around here <coughs> will, excuse me, destabilize the area and you'd have to work on that. Which is what we do in the one-to-one -one sessions um, because I kind of test things like that. So have the awareness from of your center and work on your breathing to start with. Can you breathe out in here into your sight? So breathing is one of the party's principles as well. And it kind of goes into everything really, doesn't it? Have, when awareness is the, the first principle, it's like you've got to be aware of your breath as well. Precision comes into it too. Can you have a diaphragmatic breath? If you're a shoulder breather or if you're a belly breather, can you bring it more into the diaphragm, working laterally, going into your back, as if it's a big parachute or an umbrella opening up? Your diaphragm is a core muscle, if you're thinking about, it's not a core muscle, core muscles aren't just your six pack, it's uh, the whole body working together and connecting. And if your diaphragm is working well, the abdominal muscles will also work well. So you'll get a lot more work from your abdominals if your diaphragm is happy and allowing that strength to happen. Um, because if your brain's not happy, it won't grant you strength no matter what you do. So if you try and do loads of sit-ups, um, you might have too tight abdominals and your back's not working. Um, if you had any injuries, your, your abdominal muscles might not be working so well and your back might be a bit too tight. So start here with your breath and then work from there.